It's the early 1600s near the height of the Italian Renaissance, a time where Rome's rich culture, art, and intellectual pursuits flourished with scholars and artists pushing the boundaries of human knowledge and creativity. Social life was vibrant, with opulent feasts, lively debates, and passionate romances filling the air. At the center of this lively atmosphere was the Catholic Church, the institution that stood as both patron and the gatekeeper of knowledge in matters of everything ranging from politics to scientific inquiry. It was behind this backdrop that a man named Galileo Galilei, physicist and mathematician, dared to dismantle everything we thought we knew about our universe and the world we live in. At the time, it was a widely accepted belief that the planet we live on sits in the center of our universe, while everything including the sun and all the other planets revolve around it. An idea rooted in religion and backed by centuries of flawed observations, it wasn't until Galileo thought to look out into the heavens and see for himself that the world could confirm once and for all that the earth actually revolves around the sun, a revolutionary concept that shook the foundations of the established order. Sparking heated debates, stoking controversies and sending shockwaves through the heart of Rome, Galileo eventually found himself standing trial before the Roman Inquisition, who condemned his discoveries as heresy. Unfortunately for Galileo, the world was not ready to welcome this new way of understanding reality. Thus, he was forced to make a decision. Either he too denounce his findings and turn his back on what he believed or face the unrelenting wrath of the church, risking imprisonment, excommunication, and the destruction of his entire legacy. This trial was more than just a clash between a man and the powers that be. It was a defining moment in human history, marking the beginning of an intense battle between science and dogma that continues to rage even to this day. But of course, this is where we take a step back because this moment raises several questions. Like, how did we get here? What causes a man who was once a friend of the church to suddenly become their biggest adversary? And how did Galileo's discoveries ultimately impact the way we see reality today? The answers to these questions will leave you inspired, amazed, and are sure to entertain. So stay tuned, subscribe for more, and this, my fellow scholars, is how Galileo Galilei stood against the world, changing it forever. Despite being born in 1564 to a family of modest means, it was clear early on that Galileo was destined to transcend far beyond his humble beginnings. His father, Vincenzo Galilei, was a musician and music theorist one who valued reason over blind tradition and had a bit of a reputation for challenging established ideas. Galileo's mother, Giulia Amanati, was the supportive matriarch of the family and together they planted the seeds of what would later become a brilliantly defiant spirit. At the age of 10, Galileo moved with his family to Florence. Shortly after settling, he began his education at Vallombrosa Abbey, an Italian monastery where the young and spiritually attuned would go to hone their religious beliefs and prepare for a life of service to the church. Galileo went on to spend the rest of his childhood here, and for some time, it seemed almost certain that Galileo was on a path to becoming an ordained priest. By the time he graduated, however, things had completely changed. While the dream of becoming a priest still seemed worthwhile, Galileo's father believed it to be impractical and encouraged him to instead pursue something that offered more financial stability. Following this advice, Galileo turned his attention to the medical field and began studying at the University of Pisa, where he not only worked toward his career, but also explored his intellectual curiosities. Here, he delved deeper into topics that truly captivated him, like math and physics, finding himself drawn to the elegance of their inherent logic. Through his explorations, he began to see the potential for applying mathematics to help us understand the natural world, even going as far as to attend lectures whenever he could neglecting his medical studies in favor of the subjects he found more stimulating. In his free time, Galileo conducted simple experiments to observe how things moved and would challenge himself to describe them mathematically. Fascinated by the motion of objects, he imagined himself making discoveries of his own and sharing these ideas. Over time, Galileo found himself fully disheartened by the idea of pursuing medicine and completely abandoned the idea of becoming a priest altogether. Before finishing his degree, Galileo dropped out of his studies, choosing instead to follow his heart and find something that would allow him to dedicate more to his growing passion for math and physics. 
Though he wasn't sure where things would turn next, he believed that, on this new journey he'd set for himself, the opportunity would come for him to make his own mark in the world of science. It was in this moment of uncertainty that his true journey began. It's now 1585, and after leaving the University of Pisa, Galileo has found himself in a peculiar position. While he was obviously both talented and intelligent, opportunities to put those gifts to use were few and far between. He ended up spending several years working smaller academic roles and tutoring to make ends meet, all the while striving for a position that could match his ambition. It wasn't until 1589 that with the help of some connections he made through his job tutoring, Galileo would actually find himself back at the University of Pisa, only this time as a lecturer. Though his position was modest in its title, it marked a turning point for Galileo. Here, he had a platform to structure and present his own ideas to the world, and he wasted no time seizing the opportunity. His lectures quickly became a spectacle, drawing students, scholars, and curious onlookers alike. People were captivated by Galileo's unapologetic boldness challenging traditional beliefs, and daring to present theories that contradicted the centuries of established doctrine. One of his boldest claims came from his experiments with motion and falling objects. Defying Aristotle's long-accepted theory that heavier objects fall faster than lighter ones, Galileo argued that in actuality, all objects fall at the same rate regardless of their weight, an idea he famously demonstrated, as legend has it, by dropping two spheres of different masses from the Leaning Tower of Pisa. By 1589, Galileo's lectures and teachings had earned him enough respect to be promoted from lecturer to the prestigious chair of mathematics, establishing him as a credible authority and bringing a long-held dream to fruition. This elevation, however, did little to shield him from the challenges that came with his audacious ideas. Despite his meteoric rise as an intellectual, his outspoken nature and tendency to challenge long-standing doctrines made him a polarizing figure amongst his colleagues. Tensions within the university grew and Galileo found himself at odds with both his peers and institutional authorities. Things reached a boiling point before Galileo decided he'd had enough. In 1592, he finally departed from the University of Pisa and accepted an offer to join the University of Padua, where he would continue working as a professor of mathematics. A pivot that proved to be transformative, not only for his career, but for the trajectory of science itself. Unfortunately for him, his work in this new environment would lay the foundation for a scientific revolution and place him at the center of yet another storm, one that endangered the very legacy he was dedicating his life to build. At the University of Padua, Galileo thrived in a way he never had before. Free from the constraints of his previous roles, he now had both the resources and the freedom to explore his ideas without the fear of backlash from his institution. Surrounded by like-minded thinkers and fueled by an insatiable curiosity, he began to focus on the mysteries of the natural world with a fresh intensity. He began by picking up where he left off with his teachings, but also delved deeper into a familiar facet of himself, his passion as an inventor. Galileo had always been a problem solver, someone who looked at the world and asked how things worked, how they could be improved. As a young man, he had already invented a thermoscope, a precursor to the thermometer, and made improvements to the military compass. But at Padua, his inventive spirit found a new outlet. Around this time, Galileo had built a fondness for telescopes, a tool built by Dutch opticians that was initially designed for soldiers and mariners to magnify distant objects like ships and war vessels. For Galileo, however, being the physicist that he was, this led to a pretty obvious question. If such a tool could be used to explore the Earth, why not use it to explore the heavens? As soon as he could, Galileo went right to work, making modifications to the telescope that would enable him to explore the stars. He started with the lenses, sharpening them so that he could observe objects at a greater distance and with better clarity. Then, he modernized its structure, in no time, the rudimentary tool became a powerful instrument that would soon unveil the secrets of the universe. In 1610, Galileo completed his modifications to the telescope, and with it turned his gaze upwards, pointing it toward the night sky. 
Little did he know, what he was about to discover would change the world forever. With his newly enhanced telescope in hand, Galileo turned his attention to the heavens, and what he saw would forever change the course of scientific history. As he peered into the night sky, he was immediately stunned. With vivid clarity, he could now see stars, planets, and celestial bodies, things no human eye had ever seen before. The moon, once a simple glowing disk, revealed its true nature, a rough cratered surface, not a perfect sphere as Aristotle and other ancient philosophers had claimed. The stars, too, appeared in greater detail, and he even discovered that the Milky Way was not a cloud, but a vast collection of stars and mysterious objects. Galileo was blown away, but it wasn't until he laid eyes on Jupiter that he'd realized something that would redefine the scientific landscape. Using his improved telescope, Galileo placed the massive planet at the center of his lens and noticed not just one, but four moons in Jupiter's orbit. On record, these were the first moons ever discovered orbiting another planet. But the problem was that this discovery challenged the long-held belief that everything in the sky revolves around the Earth. Galileo, thrilled by his discoveries, wasted no time recording them. He went on to publish his notes that same year in a piece he called Sidereus Nuncius, which translates to Starry Messenger. This work provided strong evidence for what's known as the heliocentric model of the universe. A theory originally proposed by Copernicus, a Polish astronomer who famously proposed that the Earth was not the center of the universe, but instead was a small part of a larger system with the Sun at its center. Galileo's discoveries were revolutionary, not only for their scientific implications, but also for their consequences in theology. If the Earth was not the center of the universe, then the accepted view of the cosmos, a key part of Christian faith at the time, was fundamentally flawed. Galileo's bold pursuit of truth was quickly becoming a source of conflict. The church, which held sway in practically every corner of academia, was not pleased to hear of Galileo's findings. His work began to attract the attention of powerful authorities, people who were wary of the impact his observations had on religious tenets. Despite the growing danger, Galileo kept pushing his findings his discoveries sparking both admiration and outrage. On one hand, scientists were fascinated by the implications of his work, recognizing that the universe was far more complex and dynamic than anyone had imagined. On the other hand, the church's leaders, who had long defended the geocentric model, feared the potential challenge to their authority. If the Earth wasn't the center of the universe, what did that mean for the church's credibility? Could their tight grip over society be on the verge of collapse? As Galileo's reputation grew, so did the threat he faced. Soon, his findings would put him at odds with the very institutions that had once celebrated his genius, forcing him to answer for his crimes against the church in a bid to protect his legacy. While the scientific community along with the rest of the world seemed to marvel at Galileo's observations, one institution stood staunchly against them, the Catholic Church. The Church, standing as the leading authority of both knowledge and truth in Europe, had a vested interest in preserving what was known as the geocentric model of the cosmos. This older representation of reality suggested that Earth was at the center of the universe with the Sun, planets, and other celestial bodies revolving around it. In a world where faith and reason were often intertwined, the geocentric model was a theological cornerstone a pillar within the Christian community, which had held up for centuries. As Galileo had become more famous, the church began to feel the weight of his challenge to their authority. The idea that the earth was at the center of creation, after all, was inextricably connected to verses in scripture, particularly those that seemed to reinforce this view. The implications were too much to ignore, and the church found itself at a crossroads. Up to this point, Galileo always insisted that his findings were purely scientific, and in no way intended to undermine any religious beliefs. The church, however, wasn't convinced. In the year 1616, the Vatican decided to wage war against Galileo's campaign. They spent the next several years criticizing his work. They deemed his discoveries formally heretical for contradicting what was written in scripture. In 1632, 
the tension between Galileo and the church reached its peak. Galileo, having spent the years furthering his studies, published his dialogue concerning the two chief world systems, a piece that championed the heliocentric theory and firmly established his position on the matter. In the past, Galileo's approach to his conflict with the church was rather passive, seeking only to further his explorations and share what he'd learned with the world. But this time with his work, things were a bit different. More than just a scientific treatise, his work took a direct stand against the authority of the church. He presented his views on the inner workings of reality, even taking shots at the Pope, portraying him as a character too stubborn to understand the true nature of the cosmos. This provocation, of course, immediately caught the attention of the church and for them was a violation that could not go unpunished. Already on edge about the growing influence of Galileo's ideas, they saw this act of defiance as a reason to directly confront Galileo once and for all. In 1633, Galileo was summoned to trial by the Roman Catholic Inquisition, a powerful tribunal established by the church to investigate and prosecute the public on matters of religious life and Christian doctrine. At his trial, Galileo was forced to confront the full weight of the church's power. The prosecution demanded that he recant his beliefs and denounce the heliocentric theory. Galileo, however, stubbornly defended his findings, citing overwhelming observational evidence and the logical inconsistencies within the church's geocentric model. This defiance only further enraged his accusers. They dismissed his evidence as mere conjecture, clinging to scripture and the long-held beliefs of the church, despite the evidence that contradicted their worldview. Eventually things came to a head and the church threatened torture and possible death if Galileo wasn't willing to undo his alleged crimes. Feeling little choice but to comply, Galileo recanted his views, acknowledging that his discoveries were both false and contrary to scripture. Despite what seemed to be Galileo's surrender, the Inquisition could not fully forgive him and found him guilty of heresy, sentencing him to life under house arrest. In addition, they banned his works, further censoring his discoveries and confined him to a remote villa where he would spend the remainder of his days. The church had won, but still things weren't finished quite yet. While Galileo's future might have seemed uncertain, the ripples of his discoveries had already been made, the true impact of his work having yet to fully reveal itself. Following his trial, Galileo was unfortunately confined to finish out the rest of his life on house arrest. His ideas, however, could not be silenced even in the solitude of his house arrest, he continued to write and reflect, completing discourses and mathematical demonstrations relating to two new sciences, an illuminating work that served as a precursor to classical mechanics. It wasn't until 1992, more than 350 years after his death, that the Catholic Church formally acknowledged its error, recognizing Galileo as a visionary whose work was essential to the advancement of science. This belated vindication, while symbolic, reinforced the enduring importance of questioning established norms and daring to see the world in new ways. In essence, Galileo's story is a powerful reminder of the courage it takes to challenge the status quo and to follow the truth no matter the cost, to celebrate the thrill of discovery and face life head on with boldness and curiosity. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy videos like this one, be sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out some of our other videos. We look forward to seeing you in the next one.